Call me basic, call me boring, call me predictable. I love pumpkin season. I love pumpkin coffee flavored drinks. I love pumpkin flavored cereal. And I love pumpkin flavored candles, but I love, love, love pumpkin themed activities in my speech room. It's just fun. It makes planning easier. Kids love it. It gets everybody just so excited about fall because fall is amazing. And when you live in Texas and it starts to get where you can go outside again, pumpkins like bring those feelings out for me. So I'm gonna share some of my favorite pumpkin themed speech therapy activities that I do and I find myself going back to every year in the hopes that you will find one that you like and you will go back to every year as well. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, everybody has either really like, I love these or I hate these. Really strong opinions about these little candy corn pumpkin things. I am team love them. And for a snack, this is not really what we're talking about here, but if you mix them, like if you eat a handful of salted peanuts and some of these, it is like eating a payday and it's delicious. And it's one of my favorite fall treats. So fun tidbit for you there. But these are great treats in your speech room. So my students think it's so much fun because you know, every time you add in candy, it's a blast. Um, so these are the little, you know, candy corn pumpkin things. You can, um, no, you have to use the pumpkins. Sorry. I was going to say you can use candy corn, but you can't. It has to be the pumpkins for these activities. Okay. So activity number one is the five little pumpkins rhyme. I have it on a, a book, obviously. I don't even know where I got this book. Uh, if I can find one on Amazon, I will link it here for you. I think somebody gave this as a baby book to my daughter when she was born. I have now stashed it and it's now one of my speech resources because she's outgrown it. You can also find the rhyme on um, YouTube. So five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one says, oh my, it's getting late. That one. I like to read the book or watch the video on YouTube if I want a pumpkin themed song. And what we do is we will lay out five little pumpkins on the desk, five of these little pumpkins, and each time we do it, they take one or they put one down. Um, and so it's five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there are witches in the air. The third one said, but we don't care. And we'll just put a little pumpkin down. So this is great for rhyming, pumpkin vocabulary. It's just a good kind of little mix it up break if your students love songs and, um, you know, a little break from something that might be a little bit more tricky for them. So I use these. Now, second activity with these little pumpkin things. Second activity is where is baby's pumpkin? Uh, we start by reading the book. And I love this book. It's by Karen Katz. It's a lift the flat book, really fast and easy to read. This is great for um, students who are pre-K and younger, maybe a lower kindergarten group, depending on, on the needs of the students. As you know, there's a wide variety in everything we do. So um, what we will do is we read the book. Now, I also have a book companion on TPT that goes along with this book because I love this book so much. In the book companion, there is a, um, you know, just answering questions about the book. So we have, it looks kind of like this. I did it on half pages so you could cut it out. And so we have what is outside. And you can see I've done it all with pictures because I needed it and wanted it to be something that children with no verbal, um, output yet could still participate in by pointing to the picture. And I also made it where you could do like a matching thing. So these pictures you can cut out and laminate it and Velcro it on where your students could select the answer with Velcro if you need something you know, a little bit more hands-on. So that's just answering questions from the book. There's one for each page in the book. Sorry, I'm a little scattered here. Okay. so. You know, the first one is, is it behind the curtain? No, it's a friendly ghost. And so you would ask the question, what is behind the curtain? 
And then there's a field of those four pictures, like I showed you, but one of them would be a ghost and they can pick it. Okay. okay, as you can see, there are yes, no questions in the book. Is it behind the curtain? Is it under the leaves? Is it behind the bowls? Your student, if they're working on yes, no questions, yes or no for each of these questions. And again, I gave you visuals because I wanted it to be functional for students who are not yet you know, verbal um, or who don't have the verbal capacity to answer these questions yet. So where is baby's pumpkin book companion? Oh, there's also a page on naming a described object. What animal has fur, whiskers, and purrs? And they would pick the cat, obviously. And then there's also a sequencing page in this book companion where you can work on sequencing. So this alone gives you like a whole month of October just based on this book and the book companion. Again, I'm linking both of them in the description if you think you have a group that this would be great for. But my favorite thing to do after we read the book is a little bit more movement based because you know I love to move. <coughs> so again, this is where is baby's pumpkin? The baby is looking for his pumpkin. So we take our little candy cord pumpkins and I hide them around the room and we look for our pumpkins. Where is our pumpkin? And this is great for targeting answering where questions. It's my favorite way to target um, either following directions, you know, you can give them clues or location words. It is under the desk. It is in the cup. It is on the table. It is beside the bookshelf. So I would let in my PPCD group that I would do this with, you know, each kid gets to get up and have a turn looking and finding the pumpkin. I do this in my one-on-one -on -one groups now. We hide them around the room and we find this. And we do talk about before, this pumpkin is yucky. We've all touched it. It's been on the floor. We don't eat this pumpkin. This one's not for eating. But if you want, you know, this is your, your decision as the SLP. I always give my kids one. We will have one before we leave if we do our work. So it's a great incentive and they love it. Like, camp is just fun, guys. Okay, I also have these pumpkin baskets. Um, these are, I, I de developed, <laughs> created these um, based on a need that I had in my uh, previous school setting. It, we had what was called an intervention time and I would have a group of four students all from the same grade, inevitably all working on different things and I needed a way to target pragmatic skills, language skills, articulation skills, and stuttering skills all in one group because that was when I was supposed to pull them. So I made this little craft and in, this is a, a thing you can purchase on TPT and it will be linked if you wanna grab it. I have, so this one you can see is conversation topics. This one is feelings about stuttering. And what you do is you print off the page that you need and it has all these pumpkins on it. And your students color the pumpkins and they cut them out. So for example, these are all pumpkin themed conversation topics. Do you like to carve pumpkins? And um, what's great about these is while you are working with student over here who's working on conversation topics, these three students over here are making their craft using the example that I gave you. So their little hands are busy and they're not running around the room bored acting crazy and you get a chance to focus on this student and their specific needs. And then when you're done over here, maybe you jump over to stuttering and I'm gonna work with you. We're gonna talk about our feelings about stuttering while these other friends are crafting and coloring and cutting. So that's why I made these in the first place. But what's great is these little things, you will need a bag, a little brown paper-like lunch bag. It folds up and fits really nice in a folder or a binder to go home. And you now have built-in homework as well. So this can be your homework. We made the craft, we talked about it, and now I'm sending it home for you to do for homework. So articulation, stuttering, pragmatics, got one for all of these in my description. I'll link it, it's in my TPT store as well. Also, I do have a um, little pumpkin basket, jack-o'-lantern one as well, if you are more into like a Halloween-y kind of theme and not just a fall pumpkin. Okay, 
last activity, again, this one has always been a huge hit in my room, and it is, oops, How Big Can Your Pumpkin Grow? This book is by Wendell Miner. Again, I will link it in the description. And again, I have a book companion for this in my TPT store that I will also link. However, while I do love the book companion, um, the amazing activity cannot be contained into a book companion. I think I, I wrote through how I did it in it, but I'll tell you here too. So what is cool is first of all, this book, if you're working on synonyms, has a bunch of different synonyms for the word big. So we have giant, we have um, jumbo is in there. We have, let's see, gigantic. So the pictures are amazing. And the like theory or the topic of this book is you're imagining how big could your pumpkin grow? What if your pumpkin was so big, what would it look like if it had this jumbo cowboy hat in Texas on the oil rig? Or if it was so mighty, like my book is falling apart. <laughs> It could be on Mount Rushmore. And so the pumpkin goes to these different places. Um, it goes to Connecticut, Wisconsin, Vermont, real places the author has drawn. So what we would do is first we would read the book, we would target synonyms or you know whatever we needed to target. And then we would talk about these places and I would show them on YouTube clips of each of these places that the pumpkin goes. So we would watch a rocket launching and we would talk about you know the space center in nasa we would i would show them pictures of mount rushmore and we would talk about what mount rushmore was we would show i would show them um the brooklyn bridge in new york city i would oh but our favorite this is my favorite i should have showed you this first my our favorite videos to watch were these pumpkin regattas where people carve these giant pumpkins and they row in them like a boat. Like this is a real thing. And now I really wanna see this in my life. And so we can watch videos of that on YouTube. And so we talk about it. It is great for imagination and um, talking about, you know, like all of these different places that these kids may not have seen or may not have known about. We now have a cool way to talk about them. And then what we would do is we would pick our favorite one and we would draw a picture about it and describe it, talk about it, things like that. So really fun. Kids always love, you know, pulling in videos about stuff. And I love teaching them about new things that is something that somebody else probably isn't teaching them about because obviously they've got their own things that they're teaching about. So how big could your pumpkin grow? There is a um, book companion on TPT and I will link this on Amazon for you. And then I'm just gonna show you a couple of other books real fast that I love for fall because I have so many fall books and then I'll let you go. Okay, I'm guessing a lot of people have heard of the little lady who wasn't afraid of anything, but if you haven't, um, highly recommend. This is a book where it, it builds on itself. So the text starts out with, you know, she's walking through the woods and she sees these gloves or these shoes and they go clomp, clomp. And then by the end, we've got these shoes that go clomp, clomp. Pants go shake, shake. Shirt goes wiggle, wiggle. There's a lot of repetition and a lot of movement because you can make fun movements because I like to move. You can make fun movements with um, each of these things. So kids always find that really fun. Additionally, uh, this is Big Pumpkin and it is by Erica Silverman. And um, this is also one that has a lot of repetitive text and um, it has a little bit of rhyming, but mostly it's just the repetitive text. And it's this witch and she's trying to pull this big pumpkin and all her friends come to help her and none of them can get it out. And so we have some sequencing in it, but it's the repetition that I love because as you know, hearing the same words over and over again is great for um, students who are working on some learning some language. So I know that's a whole bunch of fun pumpkin themed things. Again, I go back to all of these. I get so excited for fall because I love being able to go back to these every year. And then I'm so sad when it's over because this is my best theme. Um, I hope that you found something that yours that would work for your students here. Um, and I hope you have a great fall and have fun with all of the pumpkin things. Also, if, sorry, I always do this at the end of my videos. 
If you like doing themed units, I have an Apple themed video. You can see some of the Apple themed activities I did with my students um, this year. Uh, and then I also have a uh, just fall themed, a generic fall themed video as well. So all of these will be kind of linked together. You can find them um, in the in the playlist. It's activities from my speech room if you want to see these somewhere else. So happy fall, enjoy the cooler weather, and we'll chat soon.